Hello and welcome to another mod spotlight. This is Edrald and I'll be teaching you about Tube Stuff. Tube Stuff is a mod by Imnipis that adds a bunch of blocks that do different things and interact with both Buildcraft and Railcraft. So let's get started. First up, let's take a look at the Retrievulator. The Retrievulator is crafted like this, six wood planks and then a regulator and a transposer from Red Power. When you place it, you can see that it has an input side and an output side, and you can rotate them with a screwdriver. And the input and the output side are always going to be on opposite faces. Now, uh, how you use it is you put it behind a retriever, and you make sure the input face is facing the output face of the retriever. And the retrievulator is going to work with the retriever to keep an inventory which is attached to the output side of the retrievulator stocked with a certain amount of uh, specific items. So if we click on the retrievulator we get this interface. On the right uh, you get a crafting grid of hollow slots which means uh, you're actually using uh, ghost images of the items and you're not using the real items and you can right click or left click to increase or decrease the amount and you can also shift left click or shift right click to move more items at a time and I'm gonna say to keep this inventory stocked with 10 diamonds and I have to put one of the items on the right on the T grid on the same place in the R grid for it to work and now this is perfectly configured let's put some diamonds in this chest now the retrieval area is gonna take a little bit of time and then it's gonna start pulling items and once it's pulled its first item it's gonna start asking for them in um, faster and faster so uh, soon we should see the second diamond being pulled in and then we should see the rest go behind it pretty fast. Let's just wait a minute. There's another one and there's the rest. And once the chest is filled with 10 diamonds, the retriever icon here that shows a diamond will change to show a stop sign. And that's a special item that uh, tube stuff uses to make the retriever stop asking for items and that's how the retrievulator works. Let's move on. Over here I've got buffers. A buffer is crafted like this either with a timer, a chest and a, a transposer or with a wooden transport pipe, a redstone engine and a chest. Um, the uh, buffer can accept input from any side, can output from any side and how it works is if you put items inside and it is connected to a wooden transport pipe it'll start outputting items automatically and uh, it'll output them the faster the more the buffers inventory is filled with items it also works with red power but you cannot connect a tube directly to it you need a transposer or a filter and what it's gonna do is it's gonna uh, output a redstone signal which will activate the transposer or filter and it will move items in the, um, uh, to the output side of the transposer. Alright, next up a uh, not an item, a block that is not enabled by default uh, but you can still get it in creative mode that's the black hole chest and the black hole chest is an infinite inventory basically at first you've got all of this space but if the chest's inventory fills up then you'll get more pages and I've gone ahead and filled this one with a ton of items and you see I only have one page but as soon as I add another item it's gonna give me another page and it's gonna fill up forever next up we've got the automatic crafting table MK2 crafted like this two gold nuggets, two wood planks, two cobblestones, one chest and then either a crafting table or, tr or a transposer or a wooden transport pipe and a, uh, an auto crafting table. So when you place it in the world it, look li it looks like this. You can rotate it with a, a screwdriver and the interface looks like this. 
in the nine slots here you put the crafting recipe you want to craft on the white slots on the top or gray slots you put the um, items that will be needed to craft the recipe the red slots are used for when you use containers in the recipes like a water bucket or a lava bucket once the recipe takes place the empty bucket will go into the red slots and you will be able to pipe it out from the bottom and I will explain the buttons with uh, by crafting some recipes so let's take a look at this here I'm gonna put some copper that I know crafts into uh, copper nuggets like this and it won't show you what it outputs it's assuming that you know already and as soon as I put a copper ingot in the um, top slots here it's gonna go ahead and execute that recipe and then you can pipe out the output from the top which I'll show you in a bit now the buttons what they do is the C button clears the recipe in the crafting grid the one button determines whether to craft uh, one item and then stop crafting or to fill up or whether to fill up the output slot so if I put another copper ingot it won't craft anything because there is already uh, one item here in fact there are nine but one item would be enough and if I change the one to a 64 it's gonna craft as many items as uh, available to fill the output slot so if I put all of the copper ingots it will fill up the output the OD button allows you to use uh, forged dictionary items like other copper ingots from other mods in this case to craft uh, the recipe so why don't we see a uh, recipe that uses forged dictionary in action I'm gonna put a bucket of water and 14 ingots uh, from three different mods in order to craft a coolant cell so I know the recipe is like this and you can just put one of the teams in here and press the OD button and now it's gonna uh, you know scroll through all of the available forge or dictionary tins and water buckets and as soon as I put all of the ingredients in the, in the uh, gray slots it's gonna go ahead and craft it and the bucket ends up on the red slots and the output was outputted by this wooden ta uh, pipe that has a energy pulser condition going on you can also pipe output out by using a filter or, or a transposer so in this case I've got a transposer every time I pulse it is gonna take out one item from the output slot and that's how the crafting table MK2 works let's take a look at some other items you might recognize this this is an incinerator and the liquid version a liquid disposer they're crafted very simply like this eight cobblestone around a lava bucket and the liquid disposer has a bucket plus an incinerator if you pipe items in through uh, buildcraft or red power they will disappear forever similarly the liquid disposer will take items uh, will take liquids pipe through uh, you know waterproof pipes in this case and it will destroy them never to be seen again now the opposite of these items are the duplicator and the liquid duplicator blocks meant only for server OPs which will allow you to duplicate items and liquids so the duplicator works like this it has a single slot in its interface and you can put an item in in this case a splash potion of regeneration then you can basically pipe that item out infinitely and you any item will work and the item w will not move from the internal inventory the liquid duplicator works the same way you put an item that has a valid liquid inside like a lava cell and then you can pipe it, uh, pipe it out forever and if you're not an operator in a server you won't even be able to use these blocks um, next up we've got the block breaker the block breaker is crafted like this four obsidian pieces uh, one sticky piston and three sticks gets you four of them 
and you're placing them in the world like this. Now uh, the output is gonna face the opposite side or of where you place them and this block accepts a tool so I can put any tool in here, in this case a diamond shovel and what it's gonna do is if it detects a block in front of it in front of the tool is gonna go ahead and break it and it's gonna output it from the back um, so depending on the tool it's gonna mine faster or slower plus it's gonna take durability of the tool so you can see it used a little bit of the diamond shovel uh, you can put tools from any mod and it will basically simulate a left click so let's try it with a diamond drill from industrial craft now the items that it's mining are coming off the back and you won't be able to uh, do something like put a chest here it won't output into the chest you'll need to figure out another way of collecting the items and it's mining along just fine and if we take it off, it's used some of the energy. Now the last block I want to show you is the online player detector, crafted with four gold ingots, two rose reds and two cactus greens. And you place it in the world and it will immediately link it to the player who placed it in the world. And whenever that player is online, it will emit a redstone signal. Unfortunately, I have no way of showing you um, when it's off because that's only when you go offline. Now this block would be really useful in a, in a multiplayer environment where in many servers uh, they require players to have their machines off when they're offline and you could link your whole system to a player detector and have it so that only when the player detector is emitting a redstone signal so that you're online uh, your machines will work. Last thing I want to show you is the storage blocks. TubeStuff adds 10 different storage blocks. Uh, some of them are used for red power things like nickelite, blue alloy, red alloy and brass uh, and silver and some of them are used for vanilla things like redstone, charcoal, coal and there's even a copper and a tin block and you know they're useful for storing large quantities without um, without filling up your chests. So that was a spotlight on the tube stuff mod, a pretty neat, useful addition to Minecraft. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.